You were born in Pakistan. Did I say it right? Because you know I'm Southern. I say Pakistan. And it's not Pakistan, <laughs> y'all. It's Pakistan. And uh, you call yourself a liberal Muslim. I'm a Muslim, yes. I Yes, people call me liberal Muslim. Mm-hmm. You, your father taught you to drive? Yes, my father taught me to drive. He's very proud of me. And you were uh, very good in school and thought because your father was pretty liberal that you like, would follow like your follow in um, the footsteps of other family members and go to America get, to get educated. But he kind of planned something different. <laughs> yes, I saw. So that's where the gender uh, roles differed in our family and in most of the families. Like I did see all my uncles and many male members of the family coming to U.S. for their higher education. So I aspire to do the same. But um, back then, at least, it was only male members of the family, not females, not girls or women. But you did go to college. I did go to college in Pakistan. But only the males got to come to America to get educated. Yes. And you thought that would happen to you. But instead, your father did what? Instead, he arranged, got me married. He arranged my marriage. That is fascinating <laughs> to me. Some Americans cannot understand the idea of an arranged marriage. Really? But, well, that's that's the foundation of our society. Back one of the foundations of the society. It's a very common phenomena. I know. T- yeah. Tell us about how it happened and how it came to be, and why you like it, why it's acceptable. I've had other friends who've had arranged marriages, and I've heard what they've had to say about it. Uh, I think our listeners would love to hear what, how it happened. And so you see, marriage is not a union of just two people. It's it's coming together of two families who are going to be interacting a lot with each other and raising the next generation of kids together. So it's important that families get along as well. So the way it happened in my case, which is true for many, many, many Pakistanis, if not most, most is that... Uh, my family started looking for a suitable groom for me, and they searched, like all the other fam- many other families are searching too, uh, in, uh, and they were looking for a family which is similar to their own background, and a family which has to offer what I wanted. They knew what their daughter wanted. They knew my personality. They knew what my goals and aspirations in life are. So they were looking for a groom who is able to fulfill what I was looking for. I wanted somebody who's highly educated, who would respect a strong and independent woman, who would let me study after my marriage, and who is going to the United States because I wanted to pursue higher education in the United States. So lots of proposals would come, and me and my parents would discuss them together things that would work for them or things they would reject and things that I would reject. But eventually, and very soon, we found this proposal, which we all agreed upon because it has to offer the things that we both were looking for, me and my parents. So I said yes, and uh, my husband was in uh, England at that time. He was doing his master's, so I never got to meet with him or visit with him. Um, He came uh, to Pakistan a couple of days before we got married. So, yeah, but uh, we're still married, happily married, actually, and um, it works great. Did they ask him what he wanted, and he said, I want all the all the same things I guess you just mentioned? I am sure his family was looking for what their son likes in a girl and the things that he hopes for in a girl. And that's why the whole institution of arranged marriage works because, you know, it's not based on love because you can fall in and out of love. It's based on personalities. It's based on a level of commitment and responsibility. And when you make that commitment towards each other, the bride and the groom and the families, then do you, you do your best to uh, work hard in it and uh, make it a success. And who wants anything? Who wants it? Who wants things better for you to be the best they can be? than your parents and who knows you better than anybody else than your parents that's true and they are experienced in the institution of marriage as well I mean I did not know before getting married that what are the things which will become issues after five six ten years of marriage you know dishwashing or laundry we don't even think about those things when we think about marriage we think about love but when parents are thinking they're putting thinking about all the practical things as well so 
Yeah, and plus it's a joint decision. I mean, people have this misconception that arranged marriage means your parents are going to pick somebody for you and get you off to marriage. It's not like that. I mean, you know, educated families, they talk to each other and uh, they decide together. How do they correspond with each other? Through emails and pictures back and forth? I mean, how do the family, the parents, I assume, oh, the arrange parents, it? I thought. Yes, how do the parents arrange it? They met, so we are distant, distant family relatives. So they met with each other several times, and they communicated with each other through common um, relatives. And then they go so visit each other. Then they visited then, each other. They visited me. Did, uh, did you meet your husband's um, mother and father before you met and him? ancestors and aunt. All of yes. them before you met your husband. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm sorry, Americans, <laughs> but I, I would love to pick all of my children's um, <laughs> life mates. And, oh I, and, and, when I, right, and when I look back on it, I think maybe my parents could have picked a good one for me also because, you know, who wants better for you than them? That's, a, that's fascinating. So I have to ask, I know I know your religion and is modest and stuff, but you talk about the love. I mean, you've got to be scared. You've never met this guy before. Do you consummate on the first day you met? I mean, that seems kind of, that'd be kind of weird. Well, it depends. Mostly the, the difference between love marriage and arranged marriage is that in arranged marriage, you fall in love after you get married. So you start getting to know each other. You start the whole process of courtship happens after you get married. That makes me feel a lot better because I always worry about these young girls. So okay, you don't just have to go home and the guy goes, "All right, take your clothes off. You're married now." That would make that makes me really uncomfortable. But it's not that way. It's it's the beginning of a courtship. It's the beginning of a beautiful relationship. Yes, that's true. And in my case, it was different because we were living in two different continents. But nowadays, like, you know, my daughter is turning 20 and I was with her yesterday and I'm also always asking her, so shall I start looking for proposals for you? Shall I start sending boys your way? So they do have a chance to get to know each other even before they get married. It's just that the family is helping you find the right is she gonna let boy you? and the fi- right family. Well, she was born in America, right? Yeah, but... Uh, is, she gonna, is she okay with that? As of now, yes. I mean, Love you know, it. it's easier to find... Uh, meet with people when your family is helping you connect with so many people out there more resources to find the right guy love it how old's your daughter 20 how old were you when you got married 21 time's growing short for her (laughs) 